So now, if we go look at sample.env, we have our mnemonic. We probably need to get the rest of these now. And I'm so this is Infura. I'm not going to really go into why you need an RPC. Um, you need an RPC. If you don't understand why you don't need an RPC, just get your RPC. So we're going to sign up. And I'm going to skip through all of this, but we'll come out on the other side. OK, so here we are. Um, let's create a new project. Ethereum battle zips. There is a bunch of endpoints, and really the only ones we care about are like Gorly and Rinkby and Coban, anyways. So these add ons we're not even going to worry about. I th so we're going to copy this. We don't even need our secret if we don't enable uh, project secret, and that is outside of the scope of what we're trying to do here. This is a development environment for now. So you should include it in production, but we don't care right now. So we're going to grab that. So the next one is Infura equals this. And let's just copy the rest in. And let's go next to Etherscan. So we have Etherscan, which most people should know. You can actually make an account and use it. I think you can use it as an RPC if you really wanted to, but Infura for Gorly is pretty reliable. So Again, you're going to want to sign up. We're not going to go through all of this uh, on camera, but we'll come out on the other side. So here we are now on our account that we've made. API keys. And here is our API token. Polygon skin will be very similar. And same deal. Grab the API token. So the very first thing you want is your auth token. And that never changes. You will never have to worry about it once you grab it. Essentially, every single DAP has its own API key. And when we go to register one, Matic Testnet Mumbai. Let's say we want two, one for Mumbai and one for Gorly. So we've got these two different networks that we may want to deploy to with these two different API keys. Um, you're going to have to swap them out in your ENV on each deployment. So you may feel compelled to do something like this to switch between whichever network you want. And you also might decide you want to do something a little more automated. But it's outside of the scope, really, of what this project is supposed to be. And now we've created our .env, and we're ready to actually deploy. So let's go look at what we have that we actually need to deploy. One more thing we need to do is get gas now that we're actually trying to deploy. And we can go to the Polygon Mumbai faucet and we've taken our mnemonic. Import a new wallet, you can just put the mnemonic in there. But paste it in, confirm, there we go. Essentially we've done all this. Um, what we're gonna do now is deploy to Mumbai. And I've, I've only included one just as uh, an example of how the command goes, I usually type something like that out. <laughs> so we've got gas now. We're, we're all configured with. But what we're going to do is we've elected to use hardhat deploy. So hardhat deploy is nice, but 
you, you can totally deploy contracts with vanilla ethers um, with relative ease. The main reason we use hard hat deploy is for the ether scan functionality for Rink B and Gorly, and then Polygon and Polygon Mumbai. Um, you could probably add Covan and get this working as well. And there are ways to configure with hard hat deploy Sourceify for XDI, Gnosis, and Sokol, if you really wanted to. In general, when you're deploying your contracts, um, it's really nice for you and it's really nice for other people to just have it verified and public. So um, just including this in the contracts you actually plan to um, give to other people can be very valuable. Uh, we deploy the two verifiers that were made from this right here. We create the verifiers and then rename them right here. We access these names right here to deploy them. We have in Biconomy a list of forwarders and you can just get this off their website. But, um, but you can totally rip the entire concept of forwarders out of your code as you're working with it. Um, so don't, don't feel bound by the forwarders. Um, then we deploy the contract itself that we play with. And it takes the forwarder, which again, this can be zero if you want, uh, um, and the board verifier and the shot verifier, BVSV. Um, and that's that, it's deployed. And then we will verify each of those on Etherscan. It'll throw a lot of times these errors that are annoying, but demonstrate that what we wanted to accomplish has been accomplished. And then if the error includes already verified or contract source code already verified, it's going to not error out. But yeah, this will put, um, whether you're on Polygon Scan or Etherscan, this will verify your block explorer. So um, we want to deploy board.wasm, shot.wasm, board verification key.json, shot verification key.json, board final.zkey, and shot final.zkey. And you'll notice that the reason we do this is because these are all of the files that we use. Verification keys is basically just imported this uh, verification key, same as these two. So for the board and for the shot, we need six different files total. We just use FS to read the files and then we take them as a buffer. We instantiate from the IPFS API npm import object capable of putting data on IPFS for future access. There's basically just two loops. Um, it will post the verification key, Z key, and circuit. If you wanted to hook it up to something more robust, you could, but just as uh, a basic manual gauge of where the file is hosted, it's very easy to copy and paste it for uh, the React client that we'll get to eventually. And that's it. And then it'll it'll just say correctly deployed on chain 80001. So let's try deploying on chain 80001, also known as Polygon Mumbai. And again, this is in this ENV that we've just added to MetaMask. So I don't know why, the way I've set up the block explorer is a little volatile, but if that fails on the block explorer, try running it a couple of times, as janky as that sounds, but you're in the web three. Um, this is all very experimental. So if you have a fix, fix it please and, and let me know.
if we go to Polygon Mumbai. There's our zero knowledge verifier contract done in 87 seconds. So again, I didn't change anything from this and this. You might just have to run it again. Um, this is really what we care about, though we want to have this verified as well so that people can, if they really want to, know the exact math going on behind the scenes. Um, this is where we can see everything happen. We have our circuits on IPFS. Um, well, we have the WASM, which is the proving circuit. That's where data goes in. Uh, a Z key with which we encrypt that data and the verification key, which is really just used as a pre-flight check by the client. Um, these two will do like downloads, I think. So let's try. There we go, so we just deployed this um, to IPFS. And what this all means is now that we can access the exact assets that we need to play our game, both the contracts and the proving circuits that SnarkJS will rely on in the field. I guess we can check on Biconomy as well really quickly. We can see that our contract 854E 854E So this really sums up the entirety of the Zero Knowledge Battleship game on EVM compatible chains to <laughs> hit the tagline. So we have walked through pretty much every single step that there is to working with this repository. And we've also walked through a lot of the solidity and circom and testing and described the design decisions that were made to help other people trying to get started with zero knowledge. Congratulations if you made it this far. Um, we have a subgraph and a front end left to create content for. Um, there's also this issue with the front end that we're dealing with. We can run yarn start, but not yarn build. So we have a lead on what we may be able to do to solve this by uh, emulating what Dark Forest uses for their client. In the next week to month, you can expect to see the video on deploying the subgraph and uh, hosting the client, and potentially even something on CICD, but that's uh, to be determined. And of course, we'll have scalability content way down the road, but uh, that, that's going to take some R&D. Um, but yeah, hopefully this series so far has been useful to you. Um, Please hop in the Discord if you have any comments, questions, concerns, anything like that. Um, and yeah, uh, see you in the next one.